Greetings, this is Ty Brown with Athletic Director U. I'm here on campus at UCLA and I'm joined by Kelly Inoue Perez. She's the head softball coach of the Bruins. Greetings. Thank you. Thanks for, ha thanks for having me. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm, I am glad to be here. Thanks for having me on campus here. I want to talk to you a little bit about leadership and longevity as a coach and, and really at one institution. You, you've been here as a coach for 26 years, add four to five to that, roughly 31, 31, 30, 31, something along those lines, as a student athlete, assistant coach, and now as a head coach for the last 13 years yep. with, with some success, over 550 wins, Six World College, uh, six Women's College World Series uh, appearances and one national championship. So you've basically worn a UCLA logo your entire career as a student athlete and post playing career. Thinking about that, where do you look for inspiration outside of on campus here at UCLA? Um, you know, it's a great question. Mm -hmm. uh, first and foremost, there is so much inspiration here on this campus right. that that's easy. I get that. We're, we're a pretty big machine and, and tradition of excellence. Um, but what I love probably more than anything is I'm so easily inspired. Mm -hmm. So I, I do a lot of coaches clinics. Mm -hmm. um, I do, a, you know, there's, we're at a point in our sport where we pull together and we have summits where we bring some of the greatest together and, and right. collaborate. Um, it wasn't like that back in the day. You right. know, everyone would go head to head on the field and, and do whatever it took to win. And, mm -hmm. and people didn't really share their stuff. Um, it was more about just you did what you did, mm -hmm. you, you know, what your program does. Um, but we're in such a different place now. Right. So I, I really enjoy communicating with other coaches, uh, with other sports. Mm -hmm. You know, I speak to major league, uh, you know, coaches, uh, you know, even players. Right. I speak to, you know, NFL people. I speak, to, I mean, I speak to just all different levels of sports because I'm dealing as a coach, it's not just what I know. Yeah, I played and, and been around some great, just talented athletes, but it might, it's my job to reach people. Mm -hmm. And there's different ways to be able to reach pe people, and that's what I love. Right. So I'll speak to everybody, I don't care, you know, at literally several different sports, but it's just excellence. Right. People that know how to win, people that know how to succeed, um, and there's, there's different ways to get about it because you're dealing with people. Um, so coaches clinics literally I feel very comfortable picking up the phone or reaching yeah. out on an email and, and I'm very fortunate that people get back from all levels um, and I think there's a there's a little bit of a we have a network you know that we kind of get it we're all striving for the same things we're dealing with people we're right. all looking to share our stuff to get affirmations but we're also looking to learn right. um, so it, I'm easily inspired I can pick up the phone and, and talk to anyone um, even to my 19-year-old son who is playing baseball, you know, currently, or my 14-year-old daughter who's a soccer player, right. I'm learning constantly. Um, so it's pretty easy for me to be inspired. Yeah, to pick up and be inspired in, in education, right? Absolutely. It's important for a leader to continue to, to evolve as a leader. Now, now, Kelly, we talked about outside of UCLA, but, but bringing it back in, you mentioned a little bit about it, but bringing it back in here to uh, on campus here, mm -hmm. other leaders, other coaches, administrators, have you, do you go to other coaches and, and, and say, hey, I saw how you handled that player over the last month, or I saw how you handled your assistant coach? I mean, you're the, you're the constant here. You've been here yep. for a long time. There's been a number of different coaches, but, but talk to me about the communication amongst the other staff in terms of leadership and motivation. Yeah. You know, it's a great question, and I love answering that because, um, as I said, I'm easily inspired, but a big part of it is because I've been a Bruin my whole life, right. um, and I'm surrounded by just excellence, and it, it, there's... The biggest part of UCLA is it doesn't revolve around any one sport or any mm -hmm. one person. It is such um, a unique thing to be a part of something that's bigger than yourself. Right. Um, so we all really, we, we collaborate a lot. And you know, me personally, I love to bring in other coaches, not just for myself, mm -hmm. but to even talk to my own players. Um, because leadership does come in different forms. Right. Um, and there's different takeaways from everybody's philosophy. And it could be where they are in their season. It could be a situation they just handled. Right. Um, and we, we talk as coaches on, on how to manage that. And there's times where I'll say, OK, I need you to come talk to my team right now. <laughs> right. Because they have um, an experience, or they have a take, or they have um, you know just some great takeaways that I want my kids to hear right away. Mm -hmm. And it's coming from their passion and their experience. So um, I do this often. You know, I will communicate with a lot of the coaches. Um, we sit, chat, talk. I'll pick up the phone. I'll text them. We'll email. Um, but it's something we do often. I'm fortunate. I bring in the Valerie Condos Fields, you know, yeah. to talk to my team, and, and they love Miss Val. I bring in the Adam Wrights to be mm -hmm. able to 
come from water polo with his championship experience as a student athlete right. and assistant and head coach and absolutely will have him come and share words you know I've had you know the former football coach Jim Mora come mm -hmm. and speak you know and to, to my girls even bringing back um, alumni you know the former head coach Sue Enquist just spoke with my team last week mm -hmm. um, but a big part of our culture is um, there isn't like I'm going to continue to say this there's, there's it's not just for them to hear from one source that this is just what I know right they come to UCLA to be a part of something that's pretty special and my job and my goal is to be able to have them touch as many people. Exactly. Because my mantra is, you know, the key to success is to surround yourself with people that are just as passionate and committed as you are and that's what I truly believe UCLA embodies. It is, it is. I, I say it in a different way. I say in order to be successful you have to walk with the elephants, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's successful people are always around other Absolutely. successful people. You learn how they think, how they talk, how they communicate with 100%. each other mannerisms and everything so you want to bring those around yep. that's, that's excellent now the athletics director here mm -hmm. Dan he's, he's been here for some years now too yep. T talk to talk to me about that relationship and, and about um, you always the thing about coaches is coaches are evaluated immediately by wins and losses but they're a good leader will evaluate a coach by a lot more than just what they awesome. do in their sport. Talk yeah. to me about that relationship. Well, you know, first and foremost, <laughs> I'm you know forever going to be grateful to Dan. You know, I obviously was here prior to him as right. a student athlete, right. recruited for the softball program, but and as an assistant coach. But you know, Dan hired me, and he had great faith in my ability to take over the winningest program in, in our sport. Mm -hmm. You know, in the history of our sport. So, um, but what I actually you know love about it, our you know our relationship is he was also a Bruin. Right. He also played baseball here at UCLA. I played softball, so we have that in common. And, and I, he, he understands what it means to be a Bruin, the pride mm -hmm. that we have to be able to you know, carry on this tradition, mm -hmm. the responsibility that we have to be able to carry on this tradition, but also how important it is for an athletic director to support their programs, mm -hmm. to be able to make sure that you know, we're doing our job, but also teaching the culture of UCLA. Right. And, and the most important thing that he always speaks to us is how we represent UCLA. You know, we are a part of something that's, that's pretty special and unique. It's, it's not about any one person. And, you know, he really commends um, us, me, for being able to represent what UCLA stands for. And, and that inspires me right. to be able to make sure that everything that I do, how I walk, talk, how I teach my girls that are eventually going to go and represent UCLA for the rest of their lives, mm -hmm. it's more important for them to understand how to represent UCLA right. rather than just the wins and losses. Because that, with that comes an emotional high-low. You know, I have competitive, high-level athletes here, yes, and we want to win. Um, but there's a responsibility to make sure they realize they're more than just athletes. Mm -hmm. And Dan does a great job of making sure that we understand that. Right. You know, of course we need to win. Yeah. But bigger than that, the most important message he always sends is, is the, the teachable moments we have to these individuals that will fail and how they get back up and how they're able to succeed and learn from their lessons, I hear that from him all the time. Right. And it gives me, you know, it gives me great confidence knowing that I feel I'm doing the right thing by teaching. Um, it's what I love about this job. Mm -hmm. They come here and they have skill, but it's their life lessons that they learn that they're gonna represent whoever they're gonna play for next right. that is gonna make UCLA proud. Right. And, and I learned that from Dan. Right. That's excellent. <clears throat> Thinking about your progress um, in terms of being here so long. Yep. Uh, be assistant coach, becoming a head coach, and the the evolution of that of the, of your leadership, right? Mm -hmm. in, in life, you come to inflection points where, you know, the first couple of years as a head coach, you're like, <laughs> yeah. can I handle this? Am oh, I doing yeah. the right thing here? Oh, yeah. Was there a point where you felt like, you know what? I, I think I found a groove here. I mean, yeah. obviously you're always constantly evolving yeah. and evaluating yourself as a good leader, but w do you do you remember specific points where? The, yeah, oh, I happened. mean, we don't have a program long enough, but um, <laughs> I'll just say, you know, my SWA, mm -hmm. when I was first hired, I was a young, very confident assistant <laughs> coach, felt like I knew it all right, which, right. and I remember she came in and she said, it's going to take you five to ten years to really, because I, I hadn't had coach before, right. and she said, it's going to take you five to ten years that probably sounded to be successful, crazy to and you, I, I remember <laughs> looking right at her and saying, I plan on winning this year, you right. know, because I was that young, not very smart, inexperienced, typical coach that mm -hmm. felt like, you know, I had all the answers and I knew how to do it. And, and we successfully didn't, you know, we had a very unsuccessful season. I mean, <laughs> successfully it was didn't successfully have a successful season. Unsuccessful season, <laughs> mastered funny. it. Yeah. Um, but I learned a lot in right. that year and um, the humility um, of, you know, being a part of a program and helping build it, be a player and assistant, mm -hmm. knowing that, and then flipping the responsibility. Oh, there was huge growth. And I think that 
I surrounded myself with people that helped me um, really figure out who I was as a leader. Right. And it really started with I needed to kind of reset and figure out what my voice was. Mm -hmm. I always knew what the philosophy of UCLA softball was because it's been what I've been raised right. and how I've been doing things, but I really had to kind of get clear about you know, who I am, what is my mission statement, what is the philosophy of this program, and not to change away from UCLA softball, yeah. but how am I going to be committed to what the words really mean, right. separate from just the words. Right. Um, how long into your career was that when you had to do that? So, you know, I, I literally, after that year, was a really nice slap in the face <laughs> and a wake-up call of, of get it together, but I, um, it, it didn't take me long because I'd been a part of something that was successful. Right. So I just needed to get you know, a grip in, in that first year was not a great year, but the second year I just went to work with a little more um, openness about, okay, there's things that I may not know. And um, so, you know, I was fortunate. We were able to get, I was able to get after. I had a great staff, I had great kids, we mm -hmm. had the talent. It was about mm -hmm. making sure that we could figure out how we were gonna work together as a unit, separate from just focusing on the sport that we played. Um, so immediately in eight, we, you know, years into it, um, I, I laughed, you know, we were fortunate to be able to win a championship shortly after that, um, a big part of that because of the talent we had yeah. and, and learning how to keep the group together moving forward and not get in their way, right. more so than just follow me because I know all the answers. So, it, you know, in those first five years, she was right. Mm -hmm. You know, in those four or five, first five years, which, like I say, I laugh at it now, um, well past 10 years and, you know, I feel really good about where I am as far as just what my my focus, what my purpose is as the head coach with my staff, with my players, um, my ability to communicate and to also delegate. You know, I was an assistant, I was a doer. Right. I, you know, that's a big part of why I was a part of the job, but being able to open that up and learn how to lead by, by you know, not Leaning trusting, yeah, but it's also trust. being able to delegate, it's also being able to, you know, to really, I think the most important thing is to, is to motivate people and, and to make people feel um, that they're making a difference and give them the responsibility, you know, leading to autonomy, that they right. have the ability to trust, that I trust with the, that they're doing what they need to do. And um, I have a great staff and I have great athletes and I have a lot of support. Mm -hmm. um, so the confidence and leadership comes from the people, once again, that you surround yourself with. And when you inspire them and you actually give them the responsibility, then you get a great return. Right. Um, so, I, so five years into it, I would say, you know, you start feeling a little bit more comfortable, but, you know, she was right, you know, you kind of get to that five to ten year mark and you, you really start really identifying with who you are and, right. and how you also impact others. Right. Um, so, you know, I think it's different for everyone, um, but I did come into a difficult situation, mm -hmm. which I thought was, I love it because I love a challenge. Right. Um, but it takes some time and, and I still continue to learn. So I don't right. ever claim to know it all. That's when I was, you know, that clueless young thought I knew it all coach, but right. now it's just the opposite. Right. I know I don't know it all. But learn, learn how to lead by trusting. Huge. Right, exactly. Trust, is, trust is a big part. You're dealing with people. Mm -hmm. You know, inspiring is big. Being able to build the trust is big. Being able to listen is big. I think those are things that, as a head coach, you have all these things that you want to say and do and listen to me and follow me and this, you know, I know, and it's just the opposite. It's your ability to actually sit back and ask questions. Mm -hmm. It's your ability to listen. It's your ability to bring and collaborate and bring people together. Um, there's so many things that you don't realize because there's this need to do, and it's just the opposite. When you get people really engaged and inspired, that's when you're really truly being the navigator and the head coach because you're leading from up here instead of trying to micromanage everything from right, down here. Exactly. And I think it be, you know people feel that. They feel the culture change as far as she's trusting that I'm able to do this, or I can make a mistake, and I don't really focus on what happened as much, so like why? but more focused on what you're doing next. And that's a big part of my philosophy is, you know, anything can happen, anything. Exactly. We all make mistakes, but it's what you do next is your defining moment. Exactly. So that's for my students, for my staff, for myself. I have to say that nobody's perfect, but it's what you do next that is the exciting part of failure. Um, you know, that's a whole probably different topic. But. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you hope, you hope you have an assistant to tell you, can coach, could you please get out the weeds and let yeah. us handle this stuff yeah. here? Definitely. Uh, so, so thinking about, I'll ask one more question about self-evaluation. 13 years in, right? Yep. You've, you've won some things. You've, you've seen some victories. Of course, there's still the ups and downs dealing with student athletes. Mm -hmm. How do you self-evaluate? Like when and how do you self-evaluate? I imagine it's a consistent thing, but how does someone in your stature in terms of a, cons a consistent uh, leader on campus and then also someone who in the industry of softball is seen as a winner 
how does someone who has that type of, for lack of a better word, brand, mm -hmm. right? How do you self-evaluate? What is your process for doing that? Well, I think, once again, that's a learning process yeah. of how you're able to receive information. Exactly. So I think that's probably the most important thing. But I meet with players and I meet with my staff regularly mm -hmm. um, to be able to ask. You know, and input is something that if you ask for it, you know, then you're going to receive the information. Exactly. If you're if you're avoiding it, then that could be red flags, right? So I actually encourage a lot of communication. In fact, it's something that's you know, if you don't communicate, it's actually a negative in my program. But I'll bring the team together, and I'm a coach that doesn't like to do all the talking. Right. I'm just the opposite. I'll bring my athletes together, post an event, and say, okay, what do we need to work on? Own it. And what did we do well? And have them all because I want them to recognize each other and themselves. And what you know, what can we be better at? So I'm asking them constantly, and they are the voice. I have a little saying that I don't like to be Captain Obvious, Coach. You know, <laughs> should have done this, should have done that. Right. And that's our job, though. My job right. is to be Captain Obvious. Um, but I want it's more about what they're grasping and learning and how they can communicate that mm -hmm. that is the most important. So it leads to that leadership and the trust that right. they can come in and um, there's days where I'll straight up say, what is it that we need to do today, or what do we need to do more of, or what do we need to do less of? Um, you know, we've had opportunities where I, I do a lot of um, evaluations so that I'll ask their opinion. Yeah. Like, you know, where are you at? What can we be better at? What, what, is, what are the coaches doing well for you? What, are we, what can we improve on? What does the team need? Where do you, you know, so I document things a lot. And those types of feedback uh, opportunities yeah. are probably the biggest learning experiences because I'm asking for them. Some coaches can fear that. Like exactly. you don't want to hear what your players are saying, and I'm just the opposite. Where are you at? Tell me what you got. And you know they learn to go from like, oh God, is this going to like affect her? Mm -hmm. um, or but the most important thing is I say, you know, without clear vision of where you're going as a program, there's going to be, you know, you're really not going to get anywhere. You know, they you've got to be able to make sure everyone's committed about where they're clear. Where are right. we going? How are we going to get there? And what do we need to do about it? So I stop often to make sure that I hear, you know, are you clear about where we're going? Mm -hmm. You know, what is it going to take for us to get after this? Or do we need to make, need to make adjustments? Um, and then put ourselves in a position to make sure that we're all heading in the same direction. And, and the biggest part of that, I believe, is that their clarity. And they need to have their questions answered. Mm -hmm. So I say it constantly, is there's always those kids in a program, or even your staff, they just need to know. And as a coach, you can say, just do what I say, right. 100%, just because I'm the boss. Do you hear me? Do what I say. But your ability to actually do just the opposite and answer the question is where the power comes. And your ability to truly get people bought in mm -hmm. is answer the question. Right. And so I teach that constantly is answer the question. From the kids that are, it seems like they're complaining, they're complaining because they're not clear. Or they're complaining because they're not understanding why they should buy in or why they should do it. So answer the question. And they actually sometimes, ma majority of the time, Say, well, I didn't realize that's what we wanted. You know, I didn't understand. Yeah. Well, do you understand now? Right. Well, yeah, I understand now. Cool. Are we ready to go? Yeah, we're ready to go. Awesome. Versus just do it. Why yeah. are you being defiant? Why do you have a bad attitude? Why aren't you buying in? And that takes some time to learn as well, right. which once again, you're, it's, it means nothing about your leadership if you just say do it, because <laughs> I said your ability to get them to understand why. And it may take some time. For you to make sure that your ship, you know, everyone's heading in the same direction. Right. It's interesting. You, you said a lot of things there, and I'll, and I'll use an analogy for a couple of them. One was you basically, in terms of self-evaluation, you give your whole staff a mirror and turn it, have them turn it towards you. Absolutely. Right? And some people don't like to see themselves right. and see what they're doing. So right. that was that's pretty good there. And then also um, ex explaining to them the expectations and making sure they understand it. For sure. And if they're asking why do we need to do that or what it's just about, then maybe they need to understand a little uh, more about the expectations, right? hundred percent. Right? And you talk about that, and people will say these days that that's the modern student athlete. Uh -huh. In terms of like in recruiting, how do you how do you do that when you're going out to find freshmen? Or really, you only get two shots, freshmen or transfers, right? So how do you do that, thinking about the quote-unquote modern student-athlete? Do you have to sit down and explain everything about the program? Or do you, I mean, it's almost like hiring staff. I mean, it, the process is probably similar. You're bringing somebody into your culture, but you need to make sure that they're a fit initially before you bring them in. Talk to me about that process. I mean, so welcome to recruiting. You don't know. <laughs> okay. You're dealing with people, and what you see, and you know, because we're recruiting earlier, there's a lot of rules that are slowing the game down, which is great. 
um, but you don't know. Right. You know, you're going off of a talent, and you don't even really know how they're going to evolve or mm -hmm. how they're going to improve. Um, but you, so, which is why we really take our time to go after, you know, kids that have a great academic background, mm -hmm. that are, have an athleticism. You know, we go back to their background right. to make sure that they're coming from a, a system or have, um, you know, people surrounding them that we know are going to help them continue to succeed. Um, but we're also learning a lot more about, you know, I really communicate as clearly as I can what we're about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about any one person. It's about you join not just UCLA softball, but you join this culture of UCLA. Yes, and so I say that to them in the beginning about understanding they're a part of something that's bigger than them. And nobody is guaranteed anything. And there are straight up recruits that will say, okay, I'm out. Because right. they it's they do want, I want to know how many innings I'm going to play. I want to know if I'm going to play this. You know, is my son or as my daughter, my daughter obviously going to be in a position where she's going to get this and I can look those people straight in the eye and say, Nobody has been guaranteed yeah. anything here. So they, they know that ahead of time. Mm -hmm. I would never sell, and I tell this to them all the time, uh, to families and recruits, you know, I'm not here to sell UCLA. I'm here to invite you to be a part of something that is actually truly special. And it's not just the athletic experience, but it's the experience that you get and how you'll carry that into the real world, that the brand, what you learn, and then the brand that you carry beyond is truly the success that you'll have in life. Um, it's going to be hard. Right. No, no joke. Being a student athlete is going to be hard, especially in this generation where everybody's working hard. We have better facilities. We have better, you know, just support with athletics in general. So it's going to be hard, and you have to manage the academic end. Mm -hmm. So I te I'm saying it from the start. I'm not hiding anything. I'm not here to right. sell and say, oh, it's going to be easy, and you're going to be the one. It's just the opposite. It's going to be hard, and this is something that's bigger than you. Yeah. So I want those people that come in here and can compete. That's one part in recruiting. When they come here, it's critical for us, and we have highs and lows. We're not perfect, mm -hmm. but our ability to teach the culture. This is what we stand for, right. you know. And I, we're working on constantly teaching each class. So you asked about freshmen or transfers, right. anybody that's new into the program. I want them to come in, and I want them to really just learn, like learn, figure out, ask questions, be able to do what you can to be resourceful because you don't know. As sophomores, I want them to be what we call followers in that um, I have my juniors be more of the leaders because that's where I want them to take initiative. When it comes to team things or announcements or what we need to do, I actually want the juniors to do it because normally it's senior base, which is the usual, yeah. but I actually want the seniors to be to enjoy their last ride. Right. I don't want them to be in a position of it's all about the seniors and the seniors because what you see is they enjoy the ride and then they're seniors and all of a sudden it's their responsibility, responsibility. Yeah, exactly. and then if it doesn't go well that it affects them and their whole experience can be affected right. because of it's not an easy thing. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I want them to follow in their sophomore year because it's your turn next mm -hmm. and leadership is something that we're working towards and it's always a challenge to be able to, to teach that process but I want the seniors to influence and I want them to take care and so they, they've already been through it, been there, done that and things aren't working so their ability to work with the junior class but they come from a different place. It's not it's not coming from the typical senior leadership. Yeah. I'm a senior, that's why. Same thing like the head coaches, yeah. right? But it's coming from like, I've been there, got it. Let me help you. How can I help you versus the responsibility and you know, at times it's a burden. Being right. being a leader is is very difficult. So and we're working constantly on this dynamic, and it always changes because there could be a senior that straight up is the leader, mm -hmm. you know, or vice versa. There could be seniors that don't have that. Right. So I don't always like to go just by, but that's my job is to try to teach each class. When mm -hmm. you're new, learn. Don't come in and know it all. When you're a sophomore, you know, you now know a little bit more, but leadership is next. So make sure yeah. that you're understanding that, follow, you know, followership is huge because you hope everybody follows you when you're, when you're trying to lead. Right. And then your senior year, I really want them to enjoy the last lap, and I mm -hmm. want them to influence positively to enjoy it, they could almost laugh at the juniors, oh, that's a bummer, you have to yeah. deal with the situation, but I'll help you. Right. And it's like, you know, that's what we're striving for, so that when they come into the system, there isn't the pressure to just lead. Now, I'll tell you, on the field, there is no class <laughs> distinction. Yeah, right, exactly. It is, you earn it, you, you play it, yeah. you know, but it, when it comes to leadership, there's a responsibility because people have more experience in the mm -hmm. program. So bottom line, I want them to come in and, and have experience. They want to come into a system. They know their responsibilities and their roles, and then they can start evolving through, understanding it may not fit their personality mm -hmm. or what they like to do or their strengths, but it is a responsibility that you understand when you work for an organization. It's the same thing. Your ability to go in and be the worker. Do whatever they ask you to do. Be a, be a learn and learn quickly. Ask questions. And then there's times where you do need to follow, even though you may feel like you know more. But followership is a big part of leadership. Can I follow? Be really clear about whatever it is this person's saying, and can mm -hmm. I follow? 
because when you are promoted to leadership, man, you better hope people are following you too. Yeah. So that's a, it's, it's something that will help you be a better leader when you understand how to just buy in and follow sometimes or ask questions because you're just not clear. Right. The, the, the structure and organization of that process, the maturation within your culture is very interesting. What I understand about your program here and the consistency of it, you haven't had many transfers, a rarity, relatively rare with, right. within your, your uh, program, but the softball in the NCAA rules have recently changed Absolutely. regarding transfers. So there may come a point in the future where somebody may be interested in coming here and you'll have to consider it. Absolutely. Talk to me how you'll, you'll, you'll take into effect culture and fit if somebody wants to come into your program yeah. that's a transfer. I mean, I think it's a great question. It's very relevant because mm -hmm. we're in this, this time where transfers are very real and it's, you know, it's happening. So, right. um, and it's something that I think we now should prepare for, but I go back to um, our foundation. If your foundation is strong, mm -hmm. you know, that you're building a system that people are learning and understanding and taking responsibility on what this program stands for, anyone can come in at any time and they should be very clear about wow. how the program is run. Not because I'm telling them, mm -hmm. but because my staff, my players from seniors down to freshmen are truly trusting and embracing the process. And, then, and as a result, you become part of something. That's when you have a healthy culture is mm -hmm. it's running itself. Mm -hmm. I have girls that will come and tell me, Coach, I, my bad, I didn't go to class or I didn't sit in the first three rows, I'm doing discipline. And I can almost stop and go, okay, wow, right? <laughs> I mean, they're, they're coming and telling you, it sounds like, it sounds unreal, yeah. but you know your culture is because they're taking so much pride in it or so-and-so is not, you know, didn't do something, we are gonna do a team, a, a team discipline. Right. They're taking matters into their own hands and that's when you know your culture is strong because they're really buying into it mm -hmm. and then they, they're, they're not only embracing it, they're living it. Right. and they're taking accountability and ownership of it. So anyone can come in at any time if you have that culture. If you don't, and there's times when we haven't, mm -hmm. then I can imagine that they could come in and then that could be tricky, because right. then you have all the, uh, the second guessing of what about what I've done and who is this person, and you know, but once again, that's a system that isn't strong. Um, once again, I say this all the time, and we just actually did this, I'm in the middle of my season right now, mm -hmm. and we had to regroup and push the reset button because going through an entire season from fall through a regular season will always kind of create just drama. Right. People will get off track physically, mentally, their role isn't, doesn't become as clear, but bottom line, you lose focus of where you're going. Mm -hmm. And when you really get clear about where you're going, then it, it become, everything starts to align. You know, I have a little, you know, analogy or just an image of, we always draw arrows and um, like I'll draw a big arrow and then have all the arrows pointing in the same direction and how right. powerful that looks, yeah. just everything going in the same direction. And then I could also draw that same arrow and have all the arrows pointing in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And instantly you can look at that and go, ooh, that just, right. but that happens. You're, you're going through a season and it happens. So when we remind everybody that what we're striving for as a group is, is the end goal, keep your eye on the prize separate from what's happening right now. It is the process on a day to day to not get caught going in different directions, right. but every day is a challenge. So your ability to teach them that and remind them of where we're going, we're here to win, but we're also here to grow as individuals and take care of each other. We have a saying in our program, have each other's backs, it's real. I mean, mm -hmm. they're on the field, they're having each other's backs off the field because if it's not you, then it's gonna be me. If you can create that culture that anybody can come into your program and if they help us, <laughs> then bring it. Yeah, bring it on. You know, but if they're obviously distracting from it, then clearly there's gonna be problems, but I still would trust that the program would be able to help teach them quickly or be able to make sure the staff gets involved so that we don't go too far off, because nobody wants that, especially when you have high-level athletes that are very clear about what they wanna get and they know they're in a team sport that they need everybody, mm -hmm. that's when you get true ownership of the program because people don't wanna let people throw off the mission. I'm not gonna let you affect right. what we are we are all trying to get our the, the imagery you pointed out all for the sure arrows, right? for sure and yeah. i think that's where transfers are going to be real and you know it's going to happen injuries happen things happen when you may need to bring people in and we're in a time right now it's it's i, I don't like the timing of and the looseness of the rules so i'm hoping we can make some change mm -hmm. but we're in that position that transfers can come in at any time right. and if that's the case and i'm in a position where i'm going to need to fill um, a role then 
if we do that, I would have to trust that I have a healthy system. Otherwise, I wouldn't even touch that right, because that could be, throw us off big time. Exactly. It better be an arrow pointing in the right it direction. It better be an arrow pointing <laughs> in the right direction or it's not going to be working. Absolutely. Okay. Hey, well, I'll wrap with this. Okay. Um, I can hear the passion you have for the girls that you've coached. I can hear the passion you have for what you've done here for UCLA, for leadership, for the people you work with and for. Prior to recording, you mentioned that someone broke into your house and stole all your hardware, yeah, right? Rings, cool. everything. Almost all of it. Almost all of it, mm -hmm. except for this one that you keep in the car, right? right. <laughs> T talk to me about that. I, I have a philosophy that says the key to a peaceful existence is to master the ability to adjust accordingly. Does stealing the hardware mean something? You earn those. Talk to me about that. Well, I mean, I can tell you, my anytime anyone gets you know, unfortunately broken into, there's mm -hmm. the, the immediate concern of just safety. Yeah, and um, you feel violated. And you feel violated. Mm -hmm. but, and it's, it's interesting, I think, you know, with it, we went through the house and it's, it's actually to the point, I'm, a, I'm actually a mother of two and I have mm -hmm. a husband and, you know, life is good, but yeah. my first concern is mother. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is everyone safe and are we good? Um, and then we kind of get to the next, we kind of do the Assessment, inventory, yeah. like what's going on, what's the damage? And um, the one, the biggest thing was that there wasn't a lot that happened, but my jewelry box with all my, my championship rings was, was oh, taken wow. and I thought, you know, but I was pretty amazed at how almost unfazed I was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> championship rings are replaceable, yeah. but the memories are a lifetime. Right. And our ability to understand in those critical moments when you pull together and everything kind of just, you know, it's talent coming together, mm -hmm. all headed in the same direction and a little bit of luck. Right that pulls together championship opportunities. And the hardware, you know, the girls like, look at this, this is obnoxious, how big it is. But this, <laughs> this group wanted something big. And I'm fortunate mm -hmm. that I ha even can sit here and tell you that I have championship rings right. that have been taken from me. But those memories, once again, will never, will. ever, ever be taken. So, you know, I'm good. They're replaceable. Yeah. It is hardware. Um, it's kind of a bummer because they don't have this unbelievable value to whoever you know took <laughs> it. Become, yeah. But the sentimental value and the memories mm -hmm. are it's it's what drives me every day because that feeling mm -hmm. is something that not very many people get to experience. And like once again, this doesn't this you know doesn't it's, it's it. not about just the hardware, right. but it's about that experience. And I'm very fortunate I have right. some pretty great the, experiences. The, the ring being missing doesn't stop a phone call from when your former player is calling to check up on you, right? That's a that's, that's a <laughs> great example and and, and 100 percent um, unfortunate. Right. Unfortunate. It is more than the hardware we're striving for, it. and the big part of that is I want to be able to make sure we can represent UCLA. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're fortunate to be a part of something that's pretty special. All sports here on campus have right. been very successful, and we're all striving for the same thing. But we take pride in our championships as a university, not just what we actually have. And I think that that's something that is very unique about UCLA athletics is we're all part of this pride and tradition, and we all have similar philosophies of the bigger picture because we all represent something that we think is pretty special. Right. Excellent. Well, Kelly, this has been an excellent conversation. I really appreciate you having me here on okay. campus to talk well, to you about thank this. You for, thank you for uh, sharing some time. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. That was Coach Kelly Noe Perez. She's the head softball coach here at UCLA. And of course, this is Ty Brown with Athletic Director U. And keep in mind, the role of a leader is to create and maintain an environment that people want to be a part of. And as always, be better tomorrow than you are today.